God has specifically chosen you to be here at this time and in this place. You have incredible potential, purpose, and calling to push back the darkness and be a light for Christ. Stand for nothing and you'll fall for anything. It's time to stand your ground. This is Unapologetic. Hey everyone, welcome to Unapologetic. I'm super excited because I have my friend Gabe Salzar with us today. We are going to be talking about fatherhood, parenthood, how God is the father to the fatherless, and how regardless of what you did have or didn't have growing up, you can be a great parent and you can show Christ to your children. Gabe is a world-renowned youth speaker and expert and a minister in Dallas-Fort Worth. I'm so excited to have him today. Y'all will love this conversation and we are going to get started. Hey, Gabe. Hey, Julia. I'm so excited you're here. I am so excited. Big fan. Thank you for having me on your show. Yes. Well, of course, I'm a fan of yours as well and friends in real life, in the real world. We didn't just meet five minutes ago. So uh, I'm going to start out today just asking what we're asking this season. What do you wish people Mm. knew about relationships? Relationships are vital and important, and we're created to uh, have relationships. In fact, uh, you know, either we see it in Scripture. We're not created to be alone, right? But as we've seen through the pandemic, I mean, isolation is okay, but it can't be forever. You need to connect with people. And I think that's why it's so important to, uh, personally, I think it's so important to connect with church. Um, and so uh, for me, relationships are so important, but they always need to be uplifting and encouraging, but sometimes you have conflict. Sometimes there's challenges and struggles, conflict with your, your peers, conflict with coworkers or, or, or uh, your children or your spouse, but uh, resolving those versus dissolving those is always the better. Yeah, that's great. So we're gonna kick it off because as you and I know, we both just like to talk. I always say we could both talk to a blank wall and we're talking to each other. So we're gonna get right in here. Gabe has a lot of things that he can speak to. He has a lot of wisdom. He has a lot of life experience and I've been under his teaching many times. But something I asked Gabe to come on Unapologetic and talk about is his testimony, um, growing up his testimony, how he was saved, but then also about what his life looks like as a father of four and just how God has done an incredible story in his life. So Gabe, can you just tell us about your story and then we'll kind of switch gears and talk about parenthood? Absolutely. It's funny. You don't know you have a story until, uh, until actually things have come full circle. There's been healing and reconciliation. And, and I never knew I had a story. I was born to a teen mom, abandoned by my father. Uh, he was found shot, left in his car. And uh, he, he wanted nothing to do with me and my mom. I really didn't have a relationship with him. Uh, uh, him and my mom were on, on their way to uh, a, a clinic. And he said, I'll marry you. He told my mom, I'll marry you and I'll be with you. But, but, um, you know, you've, you've got to, you've got to end this. Yeah. And, uh, my mom did a very courageous, brave thing. She got out of the car right there at the, at the intersection and she had me, but it didn't result into something, uh, movie like, uh, she ended up being homeless cause her parents kicked her out, you know, being a, a, a teenager still and, and being pregnant. So uh, they kicked- just, just real quick. So he had said, I will marry you, mm-hmm. but. We want you to get an abortion. Terminate. I want yeah. you to get an abortion. Yeah. Wow. It shares a great story of, 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 of what the power of life can do. Mm-hmm. And um, so, but you know, there we were homeless, bouncing from house to house. We weren't like kicking a box down the street, but we were uh, going from family to another family and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And um, just grew up not knowing who I really was. Didn't have a dad in my early time in life. My mom got married later, uh, but there still was a lot of identity issues. I think fathers tell kids two things. They tell them who they are and they tell them where they're going. Wow. Uh, who are you? You know, I mean, why do we have our father's last name? Why? Mm-hmm. It's because we belong to somebody. And that's the same thing as a, as a child of, of God. Right. We are claimed by him. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are uh, adopted into uh, Christ. And, but uh, as, as a, uh, as a, uh, uh, in fact, my birth certificate didn't even have a father on it. It says mother and it says my mom's name, father, none. Wow. So I felt like I was unclaimed. And, uh, but I, it's so weird. Is I, I look so much like him. Hmm. So much that if, when I'm in San Antonio, in different parts of San Antonio, it's happened twice where somebody, I'm in a cash register 
buying something and and or I'm I'm walking somewhere and somebody go, "Hey, hey, hey. Is your is your dad so and so? Cuz you look just like him." And I'm like, "Wow. Yes, uh he is my dad. We never met. Here's the story." And so that's uh, and so number 2, it's it's uh, they tell you where you're going. You're going to be great. You're going to do something good. Here's my expectations. Here's what I'm expecting from you in life. And you are going to college or you are going to this or that. Or, and, and I think uh, giving direction and vision to your children is so valuable and important. Mm-hmm. They need to be told that they're going to do something great, yeah. that they are wonderful. And, uh, and that God has a plan for them. You know, we read in, in Jeremiah chapter one, before you were born, God created you and ordained you. Mm-hmm for a plan and a promise and a purpose. And that's mm-hmm. true there and then, and it's true here and now. So fathers tell kids two things, who they are mm-hmm. and where they're going. It's so valuable that parents watching right now remind their kids, you are blessed. Mm-hmm. You are favored. You are gifted. You are wonderful. Mm-hmm. Kids need affirmation. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't getting that as a kid. Mm-hmm. And so uh, running with gangs in the streets, getting in trouble, an alternative school. And it was my 10th grade year when I was in alternative school. My principal... Uh, shared the gospel with me. Wow. And his name is Dr. Langston Williams. And uh, I still have a relationship with him today. But um, I didn't really receive it. I, I heard it. And, and, and But I, I, I got invited to a youth rally by an, another random uh, other teenager. And I was like, a youth rally? What is this? And this guy was like the worst. This guy was so bad. <laughs> and I was like, what are we doing there? And, and he said, man, just check it out. And I went. Other teenagers were clapping singing, smiling, and so much joy. And I remember feeling like, why are they so happy? (laughs) This is weird. I've never seen like this many kids that were so happy that weren't on some kind of substance. You know what I mean? But, But they were so joyful. And I was like, what is this? And, and I remember before the preacher made a call to receive Christ and come down, I already knew, I had already said in my heart, whatever this man says, I'm going to go and do it. I walked down the aisle got on my knees and it was like, they use this term like wash over you, like let the word of, of God wash over you. I felt the spirit of God just wash over me and cleanse me. I was crying mm-hmm, and I felt that ownership at that moment, Julie, I felt God saying, oh. you are my son, you are mine. And a, so much of my identity struggles, like it was like overnight, like mm-hmm. didn't care what people thought, didn't care what people said about me. I'm going to share the gospel with people. We, we started a Bible club, grew it from 60 people. It grew, it grew into the library, grew into the gymnasium at East Central High School in San Antonio, Texas. Wow. And today there, there's people probably watching right now and listening right now that um, got saved at a Bible club that I started in San Antonio, That's Texas. That's incredible. So when fathers can do that. Now, I didn't have my, I got my mom uh, married another man and I got adopted into the name Salazar. Mm-hmm. And, and he, I never call him my stepdad. Uh, if you're listening right now and you've always felt like, man, I'm a stepdad. Hey, I like to use the word step up, dad. Oh, nice. <laughs> we you get step t-shirts up, t-shirts made. Right? That's uh, nice. Maybe it could be my next book, but the step up dad. Uh-huh. And um, so much, uh, you know, uh, uh, changed, began to change in my life because even though I didn't have that, there's things that I was able to look at. And because I had the Lord in my life, mm-hmm. I was able to say, you know what? Too bad and sad for me, right? I had, I had a tough upbringing, but I'm going to break that cycle. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people say, oh, I have a curse, right? Or maybe it's just a cycle that can be broken. Yes. And that cycle was broken. And I was able to transition that. And I, I in fact, became, became a step-up dad to two children myself, mm-hmm. raised them, my wife, and I had two more. And we call ourselves a family. Yeah. But we were able to break those cycles. The You know, uh, godliness is important in our home. Church is important in my home. And you know them. You know all my children, Julia. Yes. We've worked really hard and we've been intentional. And so parents who are watching right now, you've got to set up expectations, mm-hmm. raise the bar for your kids yeah. and, um, and let God do the rest. I want to point out something you said because you and I talked about this. We were joking that we ever since we got together this afternoon, we should have been filming. But I told you that I had just counseled with someone and got to tell her, you know, curses are not real. Generational curses. That's not God. You are not, you know, destined to some horrible life because of something your mm-hmm. parents did. I mean, some, there are certain belief systems that really talk about generational curses. And while that's we don't believe that's true, that you're just destined to have something happen because someone else did. There are generational patterns. And I know that you believe this and that you have a lot to say to this. And I want us to talk about this. But it's 
of course, the most important decision you'll ever make to accept Christ as your Savior and your sins are forgiven and you have new confidence, you have new strength, you have the ability to live differently and Mm -hmm. to withstand temptation and all of that is true. And at the same time, it is not enough to say, because I'm a Christian, now I'm going to be an incredible parent. Or because I'm a Christian, I'm going to be a great husband or wife. That's a wonderful starting place because you have the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. You have God's word. But you you had talked about that. Can you just kind of explain why you still have things that you need to work on and just being a Christian does not mean then you're going to be the perfect parent or then you're going to be the perfect spouse. And this we call progressive sanctification, right? It takes time to form out what God is doing in you. And there's, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like the Israelites going around in circles and, and God Mm -hmm. working through them, what needs to come out, you know? And, but I do believe that those patterns or those cycles uh, can only be turned around and broken by Jesus. So regardless of, Hey, I went to this, uh, uh, this three step, it's funny. There's these things, like three steps to, uh, being the best parent and, and, uh, read this book and you're the best. It, it doesn't happen that way. There's no magic or mysticism mm-hmm. to it. There are struggles. I know parents that are the absolute best parents. Mm-hmm. They're so pure hearted, but have a kid that's rebellious. Right. I know ki- parents that are the absolute worst parents. And people <laughs> say, there's no such thing as a bad parent. No, you have not Wait, been a Walmart at 3 a.m. in the morning. Oh gosh. Or, <laughs> a counselor but <laughs> you can <laughs> you'll see these and and they have some of the most amazing kids and i feel bad for them i feel bad for these kids mm-hmm. uh and, and because they're they're um um surrounded by um such little expectations right. opportunity and sometimes abuse and neglect mm-hmm. so what i think is very important when going back to who they are and where they're going is to start to have open lines of communication with your kids mm-hmm. So talk to your kids, ask them, you know, what are the things that you see God doing in your life? So with my own children, we still read. Uh, Sebastian is 13 and 13 is a very challenging age for children. So we're reading a book and I I took him to my, my library. I said, pick any book and we can go through it. Now, there's a very old book by a guy named Michael W. Smith called Old Enough to Know. <laughs> and so just the title of it uh-huh. like, was really intriguing. He goes, I'm old enough. I'm old <laughs> enough to know. And of course, it's very PG, but it starts to talk about relationships mm-hmm. and relationship with yourself. And mm-hmm. so every night we read these things. And and so, so... What does that look like? Is it you and Sebastian or is it the whole family? Me and Sebastian, okay, we, we lay in his bed oh, and we read this book together. We neat. go through one chapter uh-huh. and sometimes it'll talk about drugs or it'll talk mm-hmm. about sex or it'll talk mm-hmm. about bullying and he'll ask questions. And mm-hmm. so the way I always respond is, well, what do you think that means? Mm-hmm. Well, I think that means something like this. You're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Or I, uh, I, what, I, what if it's not absolutely right? Then I, I will <laughs> tell him, but you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm never graphic, right. but I am very much rounding out, you know, what I know as a parent, mm-hmm. he needs to know with limitations. Mm-hmm. And as we grow closer together, mm-hmm. it, it helps us bond, but it also creates trust. Mm-hmm. And I think parents need to have open lines of communication, create opportunities like that to win mm-hmm. with your kids. I mean, we invest times of coaching, right? You, you're going to get your baseball coach. You're going to mm-hmm. get your ballet coach and all these other things. But, and that's why you, and I, and I know we agree on this, youth ministry is like a coach. Yes. Spend time with your youth pastor, spend time with your small group leader mm-hmm. or somebody that's walking through a discipleship process. With I you. need to ask you this. You don't know that I'm asking you this, um, but I think it is something that a lot of parents wonder about, especially, and it was a topic that came up a lot when I was a full-time therapist and parents wanted to know this. So I, I really do want your take on this as someone who works with thousands of teenagers. What should a parent share about their past and their past struggles and, in your opinion, with their children? Or does it change as they're older? What, what do you think the boundaries look Very like Very good there? question. I'm getting a call right now. I have to take this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Avoidance, well, without right? without being no, too specific, no, 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 no. in no, your opinion, no. what do you think I, helps? I've been asked what this before. And, and the amazing thing is, is that kids will not be shocked. And more than likely, kids are not surprised because they know who their parents are. But you don't have to. Some parents say, well, I don't want them to ask me about drugs. I don't want them to ask me about premarital sex because Mm -hmm. you don't have to give them specifics. Hey, I I had a challenge. I had a struggle. But be sincere with them Mm -hmm. and let them know, hey, I made mistakes in life, but I want you to be better Mm -hmm. than than I was. Uh, So the false idea 
that uh, every parent is perfect, mm -hmm. and 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 lived in a, in in a uh, in a what is I guess like an, in um, <laughs> in a convent yeah. is is impossible to believe mm -hmm. for many of our kids. But I think it's very important for them, for us to be honest and say, I had struggles, I had challenges, mm -hmm. and this is what I really struggled with. This is the result of it. You may not have to get into specifics, mm -hmm. but they'll understand the roundouts and go to this, go to the results. Hey, mm -hmm. the results were, man, I was suspended. Mm -hmm. I lost my friends and I got in trouble. I got a DWI and I had limitations. And, and so mm -hmm. I want you to learn from, I want you to be better right. than me. And so I don't think that we should ever uh, get specific or detailed mm -hmm. with our kids about our struggles and past. Some people um, um, would say different, but I think it's just, I think our kids aren't stupid. Mm -hmm. They know who their parents mm -hmm. are. But to be honest with them and say, hey, mm -hmm. I, I, I messed up sometimes. I remember um, a client and they had never seen their parents fight. I mean, legitimately, they were an adult and they had never seen their parents fight. And they, so then they went and got married. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anyone knows, maybe this is breaking news. A lot of couples do fight. <laughs> so <laughs> this person I went. I think there's a statistic. Yeah, yeah. It's, about like, 100%. It's, it's pretty high. It's pretty high, high up there. But because this person had never seen their parents fight, never seen anything resolved, they became very confused when they started fighting in yeah. their relationships. And I know this is a little different topic, but it was just really important. It is really important for children to see parents resolve issues. It is, yeah. and it goes to the suit. It's important for parents, for kids to know that parents are real people. Yeah. And especially if there is addiction in your family and, you know, not necessarily having to tell all of your own issues, but telling your child, you know, this does run in our family. So this is a reason that maybe it would be okay for other people, but it's going to be us. dangerous for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've seen people handle it that way too. I want to ask you just about, and I know, I know that it's hard in an interview to kind of sum up in three points. This is how I found healing, but I mean, that story you shared, I mean, there's a reason you're an international speaker. I mean, it's heartbreaking and it's amazing where you are now. So how would you, or could you sum up? I mean, what helped you? What helped you heal that wound that does come from not having a dad and not having direction and the identity. Yeah. Well, uh, first and foremost, it's, it's allowing and receiving the forgiveness of God, mm. you know, and saying, God, uh, I think there was a little bit of ownership in, in my mistakes as well that I, yes, yes, I was abandoned by my father. Yes. Yes. I, I had a dad come into my life at that, at that time, wasn't the best dad for me at that time, you know, and, and yes, yes. I had a mom that I, I do feel uh, neglected at me at, at many times. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I, I had to stop pointing the fingers and say, God, I, I take ownership in the part that I, that I messed up in wow. and forgive me. Um, and so um, I stopped playing the victim and start saying, wow. I'm going to be in ownership of what I messed up in. And it's really interesting when you truly are a victim. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times I just want to point this out for listeners, victim mentality is like this huge topic right now and victim yeah. blaming and everything. But when you truly are the victim of a circumstance and then you actually have to look at it a different way mm -hmm. and not choose for that not to be your mentality or your identity. I mean, that's yeah. really that's really something. Yeah. And a lot of my mistakes were my fault because but I was using those as an excuse. Mm -hmm. Well, because I, I'm treated like this or because I don't have this or because yeah. we're without. Well, this is why. And, uh, and, but I had to stop, look back and say, no, no, that's not true. Wow. Um, um, I messed up and then, you know, I had to forgive others. I had to forgive my biological father. I, I do this thing about this teaching about how the human spirit is stronger than any other emotion, right? It, it, it's okay to be happy. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry, right? It's all the time. No. Right. And, and, and even happy, you can't be happy forever. That's called drugs, right? Like, uh, no, <laughs> but there's the false expectation that everything should be perfect in my life. And it can't be. So I, I, in regards to forgiveness with my biological father, but he's dead. How am I going to get forgiven for him? And what did I do wrong? Right. But and I learned this from from your dad, Pastor Robert Jeffers, who talked about the difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. The moment he shared that with my life, it was groundbreaking for me because I, I couldn't get reconciliation with him because he's dead. He's right. in a grave, but I can get forgiveness and forgiveness is untying the ship and saying I no longer will be tied to those negative experiences. And That's so horrible. if I can choose talking about uh, emotions, if I can choose to hate somebody. Mm -hmm. And every time somebody said, you look like him, you sound like him, you walk like him, I'd be like, oh, mm -hmm. and my mom never wanted to hear his name said, mm -hmm. you know, so it always, 
already create, kind of planted this thing in me. And if I hate a man, they never even met. And if that emotion is a choice, can I choose to love a man that I never even met? So I went wow. to his grave. Wait, no, no, no. Back up. One more time. Yeah. Say, if, say that again. If I chose to hate a man that I never even met, can I choose to love a man that I never even met? Oh, my gosh. It's incredible. And, and, and it was such freedom to not be tied and connected to bitterness, anger, resentment. And I went to his grave and I said, I forgive you. I love you. I love you. And it was hard for me. But the moment I really, really received that, I became a better husband, a better father, a better speaker, a better human being because I didn't want resentment and anger to rest here in the address called Gabe Salazar. Hmm. I wanted forgiveness to be there. Oh and that allowed God. And w when I speak about fatherlessness and the, and the freedom and the healing. They say there's a difference between a, 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 a wound and a scar. Hmm. And I think for many years I was walking around with, with a wound. Look, I didn't have a dad. Look, he left us. Oh, mm -hmm. And what do people do when they see a wound? Like, oh, oh my gosh. And, and people would tell me, oh, they could have heard a pin drop. And yeah, because I'm there like all emotional and, and people are shocked. But a scar, what, what is a scar? Kids walk up to me. My dad left me too. Mm -hmm. but but if your dad left you mm -hmm. and, and you're doing these great things and you're such a great speaker and you're great you you show these pictures of your family and 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 they see healing they see a mm -hmm. scar then then they start to say i i want that yeah and that there's so much power in that in my life and so if there's something i i, I would recommend to anybody watching today that struggled with that is is find that forgiveness yes and i think there's there's so much power in that Gosh, that was fantastic. That was so good. I want to close with you just empowering step up parents. Yes. And giving them just a vision for what really their family can look like instead of often what's portrayed on TV. And, yes. You know. uh, so um, I've got four kids. It's Mark, Milan, Simone, and Sebastian. They're um, all awesome. I know all yeah, of them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Mark has chosen. He actually came to me when he was 18 years old. He said, I, I don't want this last name anymore. I want your last name. Wow. And I said, let's go. So we, we went and we had his name changed. And so he's legally Mark Salazar. And then, uh, Milan, you know, she, you know, she had a little bit more of a struggle of, 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 uh, wanting to really figure things out on herself. She's very independent. And so she had a time to kind of step And She has recently come to me and said to me and my wife and said, uh, I want to get baptized. And she, so she made a declaration of her faith, which is mm -hmm. so special. And I got to baptize her, it's which amazing. is so beautiful. And then, and number two, she has expressed to my wife and I at 25 years old saying, you know what? what she said, when I walk down the aisle, I want them to say Milan Salazar. Oh my gosh. Ah, so it's just, and, and then of course we have two others. Uh, it, it's uh, Sebastian and Simone. Mm -hmm. But with our older ones, it was challenging. So it's here we go. Now I had this. I had a step up dad, but then I became a step up dad, mm -hmm. and it was really. I went from being like a bachelor to the rapture. Like is Gabe ever going to get married? Is Gabe ever gonna, <laughs> <laughs> to immediately becoming hi party of four? Yes, table wow. for four. And I was like, what is going on? Um, I struggled then. It's kind of like, you know, after, by the, finally when I get a lot of healing and stuff, it's like, now here we go again. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're having to deal with it through a, in a different lens. Now I'm the father. Mm -hmm. And how am I walking my children through success? Yeah. And uh, I found that I did a very poor job at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I started kind of uh, uh, repeating some of the things that, uh, that I was seeing through my, my step-up dad. And even some of the, the neglect, and it was kind of like, I was almost like, well, this is, I never really saw it modeled. So I guess this is the way, and I had to had to have, have a, a, a come to Jesus moment and say, whoa, whoa, uh, this is not, I, I don't like this, Gabe. I don't like this, Gabe. Mm -hmm. And um, and then and then also I was realizing that whenever they would rebel, and all kids do, yeah. whether, whether they're biologically yours or not, I was finding that... Um, I was, I was, um, I was taking things personal mm -hmm. that it was about me and it's not always about me. Mm -hmm. So to parents watching right now, yeah. it's not always about you. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you can, you can embrace that mm -hmm. and own that, there'll be a lot of healing and, and, and advancement. That's fantastic. I love, uh, what I was taught and it was either you pass issues back or you pass them on. 
And it's just either passing them back to the origin. So as a parent figuring out, okay, this is, this is really where I still am. I still have this wound or I still have this issue. And this is the root of that. And as much as you can do that, passing it back in the sense of not onto someone else, but figuring out the origin and Mm -hmm. moving from wound to a scar if you don't do that, then we pass those things on and we try to figure them out through our kids or our church or our new community. And so I've always used that as a model. We either need to pass stuff back. And if we don't, we pass it on to whatever new relationship we're in. But this was such a good, I I know this was so encouraging for so many people, regardless of their story, because it's just truth. It's the truth that we can forgive even people who have hurt us and we can still be good parents, parents that are relying on God and his wisdom. And I just, I really appreciate everything you said today, especially just special shout out to the step up parents and to the ones that are doing their best, especially if biological parents are not the ones with teenagers that are rebelling we know that's hard but we know that it's a privilege to be a parent and to get to be the person in their lives that's going to go after them and never give up on them and there's nothing like I can I can say having a dad that's never going to give up on you makes all the difference and if you don't have that I want you to know that scripture says that God is the father to the fatherless and he never gives up on you and I found that he provides people through churches and through schools provides people to model that and I just think that's an amazing thing that God does for us so thank you all for listening to Unapologetic Gabe will you just tell us in closing how people can stay connected to you how they can reach you Absolutely. Uh, GabeSalazar.com has all of my info, contact from my Twitter to my Instagram, everything there. And how, if you'd like for me to come and speak to your uh, church or a camp or even a school, we'd love to. And it's GabeSalazar.com. Awesome. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Unapologetic. Remember that you can find today's episode with Gabe Salazar on parenthood and fatherhood at ptv.org slash Julia and wherever you get your podcasts. 